Attention by Charlie Puth. Um, it's played on a five string bass, but in this video we're going to show you how to play it on a four string. And what we're going to do is just displace the octaves for the notes that are too low to play on a four string bass, meaning we're going to play those notes um, an octave higher than you would on a five string. Uh, so there are two different key signatures you can use when playing this tune. Um, you could use E flat minor or D sharp minor, they're the same key signature. One has six flats, one has six sharps. Um, we're going to use the one with six flats in this video. To play it, you start by going to E flat. That's the sixth fret on your third string, the A string. And uh, this note lasts for a dotted eighth note length, which um, in 4-4 four, four time or common time, which this song is in, um, that means that it's going to last for three-fourths of the beat. So we're going to count that with a one E end. And the count that we're going to be using throughout this tune, which you should get used to, is a 16th note subdivision, uh, which goes something like this. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... And um, so 1E end, you hold this first E flat note for that length of time. And then after that, um, you go directly to the octave of the note, which is two strings over and two frets towards the body of the bass. So this is another E flat now. And right after you play that, you just let it last for a 16th note, which is, again, a fourth of a beat, and you just rest right after by preparing on that string again with your right hand. So you'll have something like this so far. One E and a, uh, and you're gonna rest. And you're just gonna rest for a 16th note which is another quarter beat, and you're gonna say two on that breast. So you're gonna have something like this. One E and a two. After that, your first finger comes here to the sixth fret on the first string, which is now an, now a D flat note, sorry about that. Um, but you're gonna basically play this note and hammer the pinky finger back down, meaning you're not going to pick the E flat, you're just going to let the pinky um, hit the note, impact it with a hammer technique. So let's try what we have so far, 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, very nice. So there's another rest there after that hammer on, 16th note rest, and then there's an 8th rest after that, meaning you're going to rest for 3 and the E of three. That'll sound like this. Four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. Now on the and a, uh, so it's going to be an eighth note, you're going to play the E flat on the sixth fret of the third string again. That note there. So we'll add that now. Four E and a one E and a two E and a three E. Uh, after that, we're going to play the 6th fret on the 1st string again, but we want it to be connected to the previous note, so rather than hopping like this, which would cause us to have some silence in between the notes, we're just going to lay the finger flat and bar and hinge up like this. This is called a hinge bar when you use the back of your finger like this. Um, so, And then we're going to hammer on immediately like we did before to the um, E flat. Um, maybe not immediately, but giving this note a 16th note, a quarter of a beat, then resting after. So what you have so far sounds like this. 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. So you rest for the last eighth note of that as well. Let's try it one more time, a little slower. 4 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a. 
after all of that, you're going to bring the whole shape down two frets, meaning towards the headstock, two frets, down and pitch two frets. Uh, your first finger is going to be here on the fourth fret of your A string, um, which is a D flat note. And you're going to do the same thing that you did in the beginning of uh, the first measure, uh, where you have the octave and the note two frets below the octave of the root note, and then going back to the root note again, except that this time you're not going to do a hammer on. So that'll sound like this. One E and a, two E and a. So I picked both of those notes instead of hammering on. Um, so if we add that to what we have so far, um, you'll have something that sounds like this. Four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. Very nice. Now, instead of resting for as long as we did in the previous measure, um, which was for three fourths of a beat total because it was a 16th rest and an eighth rest, um, now we're just going to rest for two 16th rests, so just a half a beat. Um, so after that, we're going to go back to this D flat note on the fourth fret of the third string. So if we take it from the second measure, you have this four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three. 3E. So it comes in on the E of 3. And then you have your pinky finger coming up here to the octave D flat again. We play it for a 16th note, we rest for a 16th note. Then we go down a fret, or down and pitch a fret, to the 5th fret of that string with the ring finger. And we're going to call this note D double flat um, because it's going to resolve down to a C flat which is also known as a B, but in this key signature with six flats, uh, almost everything uh, is a flat name, including a note that normally isn't. So, D double flat, 16th note, 16th rest again, and then the note, yet another fret down in pitch. Um, the What we would normally call a B here, but in this key signature we call it a C flat. We do another 16th note and a 16th rest. So we have three frets in a row there. They call that a chromaticism because one of the notes is outside of the key added for tension. That would be this D double flat. So you'll have this here from the beginning of that measure. Four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. So if we add that to what we have in the previous measure, you should have something that sounds like this. Four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Nice job. Let's try it a little slower. <laughs> four E and a, one E and a, two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Nice job. So just to give you an idea of what this sounds like in context of the song, I'll play it closer to the actual tempo. One E and two E and three E and four E and. So after all that, you're going to come down here to the first fret on the fifth string, and um, you're basically going to do the same thing that you did in the beginning of the first measure um, at the start of this. So you have that same technique where you do the octave and the hammer on. Um, in this case, it's a B flat. This is also a B flat, and this is an A flat. So, so far for this measure, we have four E and uh, one E and a uh, two E and a. Uh. Now something special happens. We do the octave again. We do the first note as an eighth note, and the next note as a sixteenth note, and then there's a sixteenth rest. Meaning you'll have something like this: three E and a. Uh. You'll rest now. And you're going to switch to another shape for the next beat. 
you're going to go here to the second fret on the fourth string, which is a G flat. And you're going to do the same rhythm that you did just a moment ago on the B flat octave. You're going to go four E, and then the octave of this note is here on the fourth fret of the second string. That's the octave G flat. So we'll have four E and a. Uh. So that whole measure sounds something like this: four E and uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three. We'll take it slightly slower. Four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Very nice. Now we'll take what we have so far. So the first three measures. Back up here to restart it. Four E and. Uh, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a Very nice. And now for our final measure, we're going to go over one string to the second fret on the third string. That's the A string for bass players. And we're going to do a similar rhythm to what we've done in the first measure and the second measure and the third measure, except that this time we're not going to go down a full step or two frets. We're going to go down only one fret from the octave. So that'll sound something like this. By the way, um, we're going to call this note here C flat in this key signature. So C flat on the second fret of the A string, then your fourth fret on your first string. And now here's the difference. Rather than going down here, we're going to go just a third fret to B flat. And we're going to hammer back with the pinky. So I like to use third finger. You can use second finger if you prefer. Uh, most people would probably use second finger. And that'll sound like this. Four E and uh, one E and a uh, two E and a. Uh. Very nice. Now, for the last two beats before we repeat the riff, you're going to have that same octave rhythm that we had in the th at the end of the third measure, where you had an eighth note, and then a sixteenth note on the octave, and a sixteenth rest. So let's add that to this measure so far. Four E and uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a. Uh. Now for the last beat, bring the whole shape up two frets. You're back on your D flat octave now, and you're gonna do the same octave rhythm: eighth note, sixteenth note on the octave, and then sixteenth rest. Four E and a. Uh. So that whole measure will sound something like this: one. A uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a. Uh. Then we repeat from the beginning. So let's try playing the whole thing from the beginning and then repeating. I'll start extra slow. Four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three. I made a little mistake. Let's start it again. Four E and uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two E and a uh, three E and a uh, four E and a uh, one E and a uh, two. E. Oh, right there on that three. We gotta get that root note for that octave on that three. Let's start it one last time. Four E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and 
down. Four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a repeat one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two Start it over one more time, a little faster this time. Four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three. And a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a Okay, so as you can see, um, it does take some practice to get this riff down, and especially to do the counting. But um, what we're going to do now is play along with it, and I'm not going to count this time. I'm just going to gradually increase tempo every time so that you can try to play along. So here we go. One, two, three, and four, and one. helpful. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.